All right, I'm going to work on the old truck again today. Beautiful, beautiful day. And the uh, last place we left you is uh, we finished off the inside. So the whole interior of the bed here is done, except for the, the floor. we got to put that in. And we're going we're gonna to wire wheel this, uh, all this rusted area you see here, and then uh, put frame paint on there, so that'll be okay. But uh, what we're going to do is... Uh, I'm looking at the top here. I'm going to start on the top here, to this top panel. And uh, I was thinking grinding it down and everything, but then I'm thinking, you know, the, the body work on this is, is pretty good. So uh, I'd be making a whole lot of work for myself by taking it down. I mean, certain areas that I'm going to have to redo the, the body work, you know. But uh, for the most part, it's, oh well, look, a big B, big carpenter B. I don't think they sting you. Uh, where were we? Alright, so like I said, uh, the body work on this is good. Whoever did it was good and it's prepped right and everything. So, uh, I'm going to hog this down instead of grinding it and see what it is, you know? And if it's, uh, the body work underneath is, is decent, then, then I'll just, uh, straighten out what we have to straighten out. And when I say we're going to hog it down, uh, we're going to use an 8 inch DA here with, uh, that looks like a 30, 38 grit or maybe 40. Yeah, here's, here's one of my original uh, uh, hogs. It's uh, a National Detroit. This is the company that actually invented the DA. ND. I'm, I'm not sure, I don't think they're still around. But uh, they're ones that. Uh, originated it and everybody copied you can actually look at these and they look identical but this one here this one here is an Ingersoll brand this one still works it's just uh, like I say it's tired it's got to be uh, 40 45 years old and it still works so uh, treated myself to one and then see how that works all right maybe I'll set you up on a tripod and we'll we'll see uh, we'll see what it looks like yeah, I know a lot of you guys will say, well, I'd grind it all the way down to the steel and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking to drive this truck. I'm not looking to put it in shows or, you know, the way, the way I'm going to do it's going to last uh, 20, 30 years. And that's longer than I'm going to last. And chances are I probably won't have this thing for more than a couple years anyway. So, you know, if you guys own it, you can uh, do what you want with it. But like I say, for right now. I'm just going to hog down the plastic and uh, redo it. Alright, it is top panel ain't bad at all. Matter of fact, I brought it all the way down to metal anyway. And the only thing that's uh, not down to metal is right here where I did the, the fiberglass work. And before I did, uh, I welded the holes up. The last guy I didn't weld the holes up, he just filled them with uh, body filler. Uh, you know, you, you hit them in and fill them with body filler. And uh, that's why there's a little bit here. So, so this ain't bad at all, because uh, I'm going to leave my fiberglass, but like right here where there's a dent, you know, I'll just uh, grind that down to the metal and uh, redo that, and then just do the whole panel, you know, smear the whole panel down with uh, putty and block it out. So, uh, yeah, luckily uh, I thought I was going to run into a lot of body work. This, this truck has been painted a few times. Here's the last paint job, and then you hear it's all, all sealer and primer. And then down here you got another paint job, and then under that you had the the red oxide paint. And then you had another paint job under that, and then sealer. And then the, that must have been the original. So you had about three or four paint jobs on this thing. But uh, it'll be fine. It'll be okay with, for me. That's all I need is uh, something to look good. All right, I'll put it up on a tripod, and we'll, uh, we'll grind some of this down and see what it looks like.
Alright, you guys get the idea. I'm gonna finish that up and uh, see what it looks like when we're done. Alright, we got that all uh, ground down the metal, except to where to, we filled in the, the holes, welded them up, and uh, put some fiberglass on them, so that's okay. And then back here, this is where we welded the seam together, so we're gonna have to grind some of that off and then uh, fill that. So, so this whole top half ain't gonna have much putty at all. A little bit right here, very little over these uh, spots, and you know, everybody thinks it's a Bondo bucket, but uh, you know, by the time you put the stuff on and take it off, there's very little. It just makes everything perfectly smooth, so. All right, you know what I'm gonna do now? I think I'm gonna grind this. Instead of use the, the mud hog, I think I'm gonna use the little grinding wheel and uh, take, take this off. We're gonna do this panel, and we might as well have it uh, ready in case we have some putty left over. We can put it down there. But uh, we're just gonna do this dog leg and back here and uh, maybe back here so it's only 1 30 you know we got uh, plenty of daylight left and it's a beautiful day so I'm gonna grind this off and uh, we'll see what it looks like underneath yeah I just stuck my hand under here and uh, it, it, does, it does feel pretty bad this thing was kicked in pretty bad at one time right here and it feels like they uh, they might have had holes in there. Well, you know what? I don't know if there was a uh, body or um, body molding down there or not. But anyway, I could feel globs of putty. So uh, there's going to be holes we're going to have to fill in. So good idea. We'll, we'll grind that down the metal. At least up to here. No sense of messing with the fiberglass. All right. I think we had enough for today. Yeah. I ground this down and. Uh, I got a lot of putty off, and I brought it down to from uh, it was down to uh, this is fiberglass. The gray stuff is fiberglass, and uh, I'm not going to take all this off because it's all solid, and it, it would just be a waste of time taking it off because I don't want to be putting it back on, you know. And I got the swale out, you know. I got it uh, pretty square, and you know it's it's down low, so I'm not worried about it, and. Uh, I'm happy with it, you know. I ground it down and I hit it with the the hog, and it's pretty flat, so it's not going to take much. It's going to take a real thin coat of uh, body putty, so. And all this, this ain't too bad. I took all that putty off. So, uh, like I say, a lot of guys would say, oh, I do it my way, I do it this way. You know, I, this is fine. I'm fine with this. You know, you could buy a whole new body for 1500 bucks. you know, a step side. So, uh, this ain't rotted or nothing. So we're just going to uh, putty it up and uh, make it look good. Alright, we'll see you tomorrow. Alright, it's the next day and uh, still a little too early to start working. It's about uh, maybe 7 o'clock. You know, the sun, sun really uh, just, just starting to come up over the hills. But uh, I don't want to start beating and banging and making too much noise out here because of the neighbors. So uh, there is a few spots that I, uh, I can prep up. And uh, we'll do that before we uh, start making any noise. All right. All right. I've been busy. And uh, let me get you up to uh, where we're at. I, uh, I filled this area here that was uh, had the fiberglass on it where the, the seam was and down here and, and I shaped it all so everything everything is shaped and flat and uh, even the bottom let me see if I can get down here for you bottom down here where the bottom of the truck was you're not going to see that but uh, you know I'm down here I might as well do it so now all I'm going to do is uh, put a real thin skim coat on this whole thing and then we'll start sanding away. And uh, I don't think it's going to be much work. I, I was afraid it was, but uh, I don't think it will be. So uh, let's put a real thin skim coat on that and uh, go to town. Alright, we got these both panels all muttered up. And uh, you know, it looks like a lot, of, a lot of putty, but it's not. You know, you see these spots here? 
these little dark spots and dark spots is actually the the metal behind it you know it's so thin you could uh, stuff is almost transparent so there's there's hardly gonna be any plastic on there at all down here this is this is gonna be thin this is all gonna be uh, well under uh, a quarter inch which is uh, acceptable and uh, it'll be perfectly flat so uh, I'm gonna go in and have an early lunch and then we'll come out and uh, this top half we're gonna do by hand we're gonna uh, board that out by hand and then this one here we'll use the machines on because uh, the top half is what you really see so uh, all right we'll see when we come back from lunch all right we got a good bit done today I got the back panel here done and I got some uh, glazing putty on there so that's uh, pretty much done and this here we uh, roughed that out so it was all perfect and then uh, I filled in the low spots with a second coat in certain spots and uh, we'll just hit that tomorrow and that, uh, that should be pretty much done and uh, this here I did a little hand sanding back here to see how well it was sand and uh, I can do that in the morning you know I can come out here early in the morning and uh, hand sand this and won't bother the neighbors you know so I can get an extra hour in so all right we'll see you guys in all right it's the next day and it's uh, about 6 30 in the morning the sun's just starting to come up and uh, we're going to hand sand this just a little bit and it's uh, sand pretty nice by hand is uh, making a little bit of noise so I think maybe I'll just uh, do uh, do the corners till maybe uh, it gets a little bit later don't want to wake the neighbors I got good neighbors just that little bit let me lower you down Just a little bit. That's how nice that sands. Alright, yeah, it shouldn't take too long, so uh, I'm gonna uh, come around back here. And we'll do this, finish this by hand, keep the noise down, and then uh, we'll continue on. Yeah, it looks good already. Alright, see you. We'll see you maybe about an hour. We'll start doing it again. Good. All right, it's about eight o'clock in the morning now, and uh, we got a good bit done. 
I ripped that down with uh, 36 on a on a 32 inch uh, flat board here, and uh, it's amazing how you don't realize how warped that is until you put a, a 32 inch straight edge on there. But uh, anyway, I do have a few areas here that I'm going to fill in with glazing putty. You know, you see these dark greenish areas here? Very slight. I mean, you can't even feel them. You know, you can see them, but you can't feel them. So I'm going to fill that in with glazing putty. Got some down here. Got a raw edge there. You got to remember, these panels were, were punched out with 150-ton uh, presses and probably done it the uh, you know, a hundred panels a minute or something. So, you know, what what looks to the eye as straight and and flat, really isn't. You know, and that's that's what this uh, this thin coat of uh, putty does. It makes everything perfectly flat where it should be, and uh, this panel should be. So, uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna fill these with uh, glazing putty, and then I'm gonna hit it with 80, and that should make this uh, perfectly flat. And then I'm going to smear the whole thing with a real thin coat of glazing putty. And that'll get us our uh, minor scratches out and pinholes and stuff. So, uh, And then I'll let that uh, harden up and then uh, hit it at the end of the day with 80. And then maybe we'll prime it. Maybe we won't. And uh, meanwhile, then we'll work on this. So uh, I'm going to do that and we'll see when we're done. All right, this top half here is all uh, nice and smooth. Just have to uh, put some glazing putty on it and get rid of those scratches. You can see it's so thin. It's uh, just down, it's about down to the metal all through there. There's probably not even a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch of putty on here in some spots. All right. Never been so straight. All right, it's 90 degrees out here, so I'm gonna take a break and uh, we'll show you. We'll catch you. We'll catch you up on where we're at. All right, we took this and uh, we put glazing putty on this whole thing, filled the scratches, and so all we have to do is block that down with uh, some 80 and then some uh, heavy primer, and that'll all be done. That came out nice. And then down here, all this body work is done. All the way down here, all the way down the dog leg. That's all done. And uh, up here, I actually uh, used the real glazing putty. But down here, since it's low and everything, uh, and glazing putty so expensive, uh, I'm going to make my own and uh, use that down here. I'll show you guys uh, how we make that stuff. And it, wor it works the same. All it is is just a, a thinner version. And uh, like I say, it's a, a lot cheaper to... Well, I'll show you. I'll go, let's go inside and we'll show you the stuff. All right, here's the glazing putty I used. And uh, I think this little thing costs like $35 or something. And uh, all it is is just uh, uh, a lot lot thinner. It's, it's just body putty, but it's a lot thinner. They put more resin in it. Body putty is only uh, resin and uh, talc. So... Uh, Instead of buying this, you know, you get a can of uh, regular canned body putty here. What do we got here? Special Light USC. And uh, this stuff here, they call it the plastic thinner. Back in the day, it used to be called the uh, plastic honey. Matter of fact, on the back here, it actually says that plastic thinner. AKA, right above my thumb there, AKA honey. So, uh, and it works just as good. So, uh, I'll throw you up on the, the tripod there and we'll mix them up. And then uh, I'll do that uh, whole side there and let it set up. I think tomorrow is Saturday, so I might not work back, back work on this thing until uh, next Monday. All right, I'm going to throw these on the tripod. Are right, you guys with me? Just going to take some. Uh, body putty here. I'm not going to mix too much up because like I say it's 90 degrees and this stuff is lighting up pretty fast. So I don't mind mixing up uh, 
two batches instead of just uh, one big one. All right, you see how uh, see how thick that is. Take some of this and uh, pour it on here. I'm not going to put a hardener in. Sometimes you just mix the hardener and everything and mix it all together. But you see how thin it's getting. And this stuff goes on so thin that all it does is cover up the sanding scratches and, and uh, the pinholes. See how thin it is? It's like soup. That goes on real thin. Matter of fact, after you mix it, you usually use a, a fairly new spreader, and that uh, puts it on even even thinner. All right, I'm gonna put some harder in this, and then uh, go put it on a truck. I'm not going to bring these with me because, like I said, this stuff, I don't have time to dick around with the camera and setting it up over there. and You know, this stuff just uh, lights up too fast in this kind of heat. All right, we'll show it to you when we're done. All right, cleaned everything up. My little canopy away. And uh, there you go. See how nice and smooth that goes on? Yeah, don't worry about these little glops. I usually cut them down when it's still, when it's hardened. But it's still soft, you know. I usually cut them down with a razor blade, but uh, I got tied up doing something else. But that's okay. That's cut, that'll, uh, that'll cut right down. But, uh, yeah, and it goes on nice one when, uh, when you put that resin in there and make it soupy. So, uh, all right. Like I said, I'll uh, see you guys on Monday, maybe. I don't know. It might, it might rain tomorrow. We'll see what the weather is. Maybe, maybe I'll come back tomorrow and do something. But. Uh, if not, we'll see you on Monday. All right, it's Monday morning, and uh, we've had a little precipitation overnight. It's uh, it's dry out now, but uh, everything still feels a little damp. But that's not going to hold us up. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to hand sand this, and then probably hand sand this. And it shouldn't take too much. And uh, we were going to we were going to machine this where hit this with the machines but uh, Friday when I was cleaning up my uh, compressor took a crap and I need a new motor on it and uh, I gotta wait for it it's Monday and the uh, motor supposed to come five to ten days yeah this is a it's a big heavy-duty this, this compressor been good to me and it's a big professional heavy-duty kind so uh, I checked everything out and it, it did wind up going up to the motor and uh, I took the motor down to Mike and uh, had him look at it and uh, he, we didn't it was grounding out you started up and it, it would uh, it would shoot right up to I think it, it uses uh, 10 amps or something like that he said and it shot up like a hundred it was it had a dead short inside even though it ran for a couple seconds so uh, it's in the windings and it's nothing you could do. It's more of a manufactured defect than anything. And I'm surprised it lasts this long because this, this uh, compressor isn't new. I don't know what the date is on there. I'll have to look. But I think it, it might be from the 90s. So uh, I do have a little compressor, like a two-horse compressor to run little air tools on job sites. I'm going to see if I can find that just to, to use it to, to blow the dust off of this thing. And might be able to use it to spray you know it should hold enough pressure you know because you only need about 30 pounds of air to spray primer 30 to 60 so uh, we'll see what happens like i said we're going to try to get something done today all right so turn these back on when we start working yeah i forgot to mention you know that's this this motor is a five horse and it's a ao smith and it's nothing you can really 
get at Harbor Freight or anything like that. It's got a it's got a seven eight shaft on there, you know. Like I say, this is a a real compressor, you know, meant for uh, shops and industrial use and stuff like that. So uh, I'm gonna pay through the nose for this thing too, but you got to do it. So, all right, let's get back to work. All right, we got all the bodywork finished here. It's uh, flat and smooth and all ready for prime. So. Uh, it is kind of windy out here. See the trees up there? But uh, it does, the wind does die down, so uh, we're going to try to get it in between the uh, wind burst. So uh, let's go in here and see what we can do. I also mentioned that, you know, my compressor crapped out, and all I have is this. Uh, let me turn it around here. Sorry about the camera work. I'm working alone here. All right, this, uh, I got this compressor here. And it's uh, one horsepower, and uh, it's uh, all it's good for is like a little, little tiny uh, nail gun or brad gun or something. But it's not meant to uh, hold hold the high pressures and stuff. So let me show you what I got to do. I uh, pulled out these uh, high volume, low pressure guns, and uh, they're supposed to work on. Uh, this one says uh, 50 pounds max, 50 pounds pressure, and this one here. Oh, I think I set it on the tip here, yeah. I don't know if that's going to focus in for you. Don't look like it. Anyway, it says max uh, 30, 30 pounds, so... Uh, I guess we'll try this one. I don't know how well these, these guns are because I never took a liking to them. This is the reason right there. The, the, cap, the caps fall off and you know when you're raised on a, a cup gun and use it for so many years uh, these came out I, I just never took a liking to them. Not that they aren't any good it's just I don't like them. You know you see up there I got 20 20 guns, a lot of them uh, Bink 7s and Debilbis and, you know, and uh, I could take any one of them and, and spray a great paint job. But with these, you know, you, you got to reteach yourself how to how to do stuff. You know, them, them other guns, you know, they, they're known for wasting paint and, and uh, blowing a lot of material out. That's why they came out with these. But uh, this may save our ass, you know, because we don't have a compressor, so... Uh, I'm going, to, I'm going to test both of these out and uh, see which, which one's going to work better. All right, we'll see you outside and we're going to start painting. Priming, just priming. All right, got it all primed up and I uh, can't say I dislike that gun. You know, it wasn't, uh, it did its job and you really can't judge it considering, you know, I was only using it with this one horsepower machine here. I would have to... Uh, just do a little two foot section and wait for it to build up. It built up fast, but still, you know, I mean, it's just not the way you're supposed to spray stuff. So, uh, I'll have to try, I'll have to try that gun out when, uh, when my big compressor's back up and running. Like I say, uh, I could lean, learn to deal with it if I had to. It, uh, did its job. And that, that's what we wanted it to do. Same with a compressor, you know, I mean, it's it's keeping us working, so all right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna call this one good. And uh, next video, we're gonna uh, we're gonna start uh, stripping this out because this this feels like it's pretty much all steel here. But I know I know I'm gonna run at the putty, so when I run at the putty, then I'll take the grinder out. And uh, I don't have any air, I can't, still can't use air tools, so uh, we're going to use the electric tools to get that down. All right, I appreciate you guys staying and uh, hanging in there with me. And uh, we'll see you in the next one, all right?